Hi everybody, I have been asked to do a review for um, math on, uh, for nurses and so we will do a little bit of um, basic math for nurses. Let's start with fractions. The numerator is the number that is the top of the fraction. The denominator is the number that is uh, below on the fraction. A proper fraction, the value of the numerator is less than the value of the denominator. An improper fraction is just opposite. The value of the numerator is greater than the value of the denominator. A mixed number is a positive number with a whole number that is followed by a proper fraction. When we multiply fractions, um, we want to get them in the lowest form to begin with. So if you had one half or maybe uh, four eighths, we would lower that to uh, put it in its simplest form as one half, and then we multiply straight across. So in our example, we would multiply one times one, which is equal to one, three times two, which is equal to six, and that is multiplying a fraction. When we divide a fraction, we don't do that very well, so rather than divide, we take the second fraction and we invert it, and then we multiply. So in our example below, um, we've taken one fourth, which is the second fraction, we've inverted it to four over one, and we multiply straight across three times four, which is 12, eight times one, which is eight, and then we need to take that number and put it in its, reduce it and put it in its lowest terms. So we need to take the improper fraction of 12 over eight, we reduce that to one and six twelfths, and then we reduce that again to one and a half. When we talk about decimals, uh, we talk about uh, whole numbers to the left of the decimal point, decimal point is right here, and then fractions to the right. Uh, whole numbers begin with ones, we go to tens, hundreds, thousands, and ten thousandths. Going to the right, uh, in uh, partial numbers, we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and ten thousandths. When we convert between uh, fractions and decimals, um, going from a fraction to a decimal is fairly easy. We take the top number, the numerator, and we divide by the bottom number, the denominator. So in this case, we would divide one by four, and that, uh, in this case, uh, equals 0 0.25. When we convert between a decimal to a fraction, again, that's fairly easy, we take um, the numerator, and place it on the, uh, or the, the decimal, I'm sorry, and place it as the denominator. So in this number 0 0.125, the 125 becomes the numerator, and the denominator becomes one with as many zeros as the numerator. So in this example, one, and then one, two, three zeros for the 125. And then we would reduce that to its lowest form, and in this case, it's one eighth. Um, let's talk about rules of rounding for a minute. So uh, for five and above, we're gonna round up. If it's below five or less than five, we're gonna round down. And let's um, look at this in a couple of examples. Usually we do this um, in less than, well, always we do this in less than whole numbers. So when we're rounding from three places to two places, um, we have 0 0.123, three is less than five, so we're gonna round down and that becomes 0 0.12. Uh, this number, 1.744, four is less than five, so we're gonna round down, 1.74, we just drop that second four. This example, 5.325, five or above, we go up, so it becomes 5.33. The last example, 0 0.666, this six is greater than five, so the number becomes 0 0.67, we round up. When we're rounding to one place, tenths and hundredths, our example, 0 0.13, the three is less than five, so we round down and the number becomes 0 0.1. For the second example, the number is 5.64, four is less than five, so we're gonna round down, 5.6. Next example, 0 0.75, five or above, we round up, so this number becomes 0 0.8. Next example, 1.66, the second six is above five, so we're gonna go up, 1.7. And our last example, 0 0.95, five or above, we go up. That rounds up to, um, rounds the nine up to zero, which is one. 
and 0 0.1 and with decimals we drop the trailing zero so that makes our number one. So when we talk about um, solving a solution or a formula we talk about cross multiplying and we use this a lot for um, deciding what dose each to give. Typically we use dose each on hand over amount on hand times dose each desired times uh, divided by amount desired, okay? Um, and you'll have to forgive me a little bit for the way that PowerPoint works. Um, this is, although it's a formula, it's laid out in the way of uh, uh, word processing. So down here, um, uh, here's an example. We're gonna give something that is 10, comes in 10 milligram tablets. That's our dosage on hand. The amount on hand, we also have 10 milligram tablets. We wanna give a 15 milligram dose and we need to know how many tablets we have. So we're going to um, do some cross multiplication. So first we're gonna multiply 10 milligrams times 15 milligrams or 10 times 15. That's this one, 10 times 15. And then we're gonna divide by 10 X. So 10 times 15 is 150, that's this number. And then we're gonna divide by 10 X or 10. So we're going to divide 150 by 10, and that gives us 1.5 in its simplest form. Let's talk about metric prefixes. These should look familiar to you. Micro is one millionth, milli, one thousandth, centi, one hundredth, deci, one tenth, deca, one, hecta, one hundred, kilo, 1,000, and then we have this nice little mnemonic that helps us remember those. King Henry died from a disease called mumps. So we have kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, milli, and I guess you just have to remember micro. All right, so converting between metric or uh, within metric, we're gonna use that same cross multiplication um, formula. So if we want to figure out uh, 0.3 grams to milligrams, let's do our conversion. We know that one gram is equivalent to 1,000 milligrams. So we're going to cross multiply. We know we want 0.3 grams. What is that in milligrams? Here's our X, so let's cross multiply. 1,000 milligrams times 0.3, that's what we have down here. When we do that math, it equals 300. Then we're going to divide 300 by 1, and that gives us 300 milligrams. X is 300 times, or divided by 1, 300 milligrams. All right, appro approximate equivalence. This is something that you simply need to memorize. One teaspoon is equal to 5 mils. One tablespoon is equal to 3 teaspoons is equal to 15 mils. One fluid ounce is equal to 30 mils is equal to six teaspoons is equal to two tablespoons. One liter is equal to one quart is equal to 32 fluid ounces is equal to two pints is equal to four cups. One pint is equal to 500 mils is equal to 600 fluid ounces is equal to two cups. One cup is equal to 250 mils is equal to eight fluid ounces. This is an important one for you to know. One kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. Inches, one inch is equal to 2.5 centimeters. All right, let's do a couple of conversions between uh, systems of measure. We know that one fluid ounce is equal to 30 milliliters. So let's do some cross multiplication. Let's figure out how many uh, mils there are in two fluid ounces. So we know we've got one fluid ounce equal to 30 mil. Let's see what two fluid ounces are. So we're going to cross multiply. Here's our x. So we're going to go 30 times 2. There's 30 times 2. And that's equal to 60. And then we'll do our um, uh, 1x or divide 60 by 1, x is equal to 60 mils. So we know that 2 fluid ounces is equal to 60 mils. 
Another thing you need to know is your 24 hour clock. And I've got this uh, represented in two different ways. Um, you know that noon and midnight are gonna be the same place on a traditional clock. One is gonna be called 1200, that's noon. One is gonna be 2400 or 0000, zero, zero, zero depending on your facility. And then we go around and we'll have one 0100, 0200, 0300, 0400, 0500, and so on, all the way around the clock. When we come to 1 p.m., that is equivalent to 1300, 1400, 1500, 1600, and so on. The only thing you have to check for sure is, with your, is if your facility uses 2400 as midnight, um, or if your facility uses 2359, as um, the last time of the uh, evening and zero, 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 zero as um, midnight. Okay, then here is a comparison between traditional and 24 hour times. And this is a straight conversion. All right, another thing you might, uh, you will need to know um, are the formulas to convert temperatures between Fahrenheit and Celsius and you might as well um, Simply memorize this for a conversion between Celsius. You take the Celsius, or the uh, I'm sorry, the conversion uh, for Celsius. You take the Fahrenheit temperature, you subtract 32, just simply the number 32, and then divide that by 1.8. That gives you your Celsius temperature. For a Fahrenheit temperature, you take the Celsius temperature and multiply by 1.8 and then add 32 to that. It gives you a Fahrenheit temperature. Just memorize those. Um, I don't know how those formulas were come up um, or were developed, but that is how you do the conversions. All right, I wanted to include a couple of pictures um, just for your viewing pleasure. This is a traditional medicine cup that you'll see on the floor. And uh, this just gives you uh, a look at how uh, we measure things, so the gradation on here is in mils on one side and international or, or standard measure here. So you've got half teaspoon, teaspoon, up to two tablespoons here. Um, on this side, we also have ounces. And then this is apothecary or grams. Um, I cannot say that I've ever used grams, but here it is. Um, you're also going to see possibly calibrated droppers. We use these for infants. Um, you can also see pediatric and oral measuring devices. Um, this is a, a syringe that's meant for oral um, medication. There is no needle tip on this, but you do have a cap. You'll probably want to save this cap to recap it. Um, we use these for even for adults because it makes them nice and easy to uh, swallow oral liquids out of. Um, I put a variety of syringes in here just for you to look at. This is a U100 insulin syringe. This is a three mil um, syringe, and then this is a one mil syringe. And you can see the difference. They're not necessarily scaled accordingly. I just wanted to show you some pictures. Uh, let's talk about the seven parts to a drug order. You need the patient's name, you need the name of the drug, a correct dosage, the route of administration. Uh, the order has to have the frequency, the time, and any special instructions. You need the date and time of the order and the signature and licensure of the person writing the order. We also have six rights of medication administration. That is, we check for the right patient, the right drug, the right amount, the right route, the right time, and the right documentation before we give the drug. We also need to look at the drug itself and look for correct information on the label. So we're looking for the drug form, the, dr the dosage strength, the supply dosage or concentration, the total volume in the drug container, uh, especially if it's a multi-dose container, the administration route, and then the expiration date. Um, remember that when you're doing medication administration, sometimes we have to split tablets. Only a scored tablet is intended to be divided. If it's an enteric coated tablet, it's not intended to be divided or crushed. That enteric coating is on there so that it will not be metabolized until it is later in the uh, gastric system. Also, if you have a sustained release capsule, it's not to be opened or mixed with food or fluid. Again, it's intended to be um, uh, to hit the system a little bit later in the uh, gastric system. I want to go over parts of a solution. We have a solute, 
solvent in solution. The solute is the actual concentrate that you're going to mix. Um, uh, usually water is the, the solvent. It can be other things too. And then the uh, solution is uh, the entire combination of the two. When uh, these are usually expressed in a fraction, the numerator is a concentrate, the denominator is the total solution. So when we have a one-third strength nutritional formula, this just indicates that the one part is the concentrate, there's three parts total solution, and then you do a little bit of math to figure out what the solvent is. You would um, take one minus three, and, uh, or three minus one, and you would get two parts, and that's your amount of solvent. And make sure when you, uh, if you have to reconstitute this, that you label any kind of solutions appropriately. Let's talk about IV flow rates. Um, I'm sure you'll be seeing this on a test. So here's a couple of IV flow rates. We usually calculate these in mils per hour. So we're going to take the total mil ordered over the total hour ordered, and then we'll multiply this out. Usually X uh, is the rate that we're looking for and per hour, so that we would uh, be measuring this by number of mils per hour. So here's an example. We've got 1,000 mils in a bag, a one liter bag. We're going to run that over eight hours. How many mils an hour are we going to run that at? So we're going to take um, 1,000 mils and multiply by an hour. Here's your cross multiplication. So there's 1,000. And then we're going to divide that 1,000 by 8 because we're going to do 8x. So 1,000 divided by 8 is 125. So x is equal to 125 mils per hour. Now we're going to throw in uh, a tubing drop factor. We're going to use that same problem. Uh, we know that um, an eight-hour rate for a thousand cc bag is 125 mils an hour, right? Okay, when we use a drip factor or a tubing factor, we need to convert this from hours to minutes. So we're going to take 125 mils per hour and we're going to convert that to 125 mils per minute. So we know that 125 an hour is equivalent to 125 in 60 minutes. So now we want to figure out how many um, mils are going to be in a minute. So we're going to take 125 um, and we're going to cross multiply by 1 and that's going to be 125 and then we'll divide by 60x. And that's on the next slide. So 125 times 1 is 125. We're going to divide 125 by 60. X is 2.08. Now we're going to multiply by that drop factor, which in this case, or drip factor, is 10. So we're going to multiply 2.08 times 10, which is 20.8. is above 5, so we're going to round up, and that is 21 drops per minute. And that's how you calculate um, a flow rate with tubing drop factor. Make sure we carry calculations to one decimal and then round up, and uh, round up drops per minute to the nearest whole number. You cannot calculate um, a manual 20.8 drops, and you also cannot plug that rate into a um, smart pump. You have to put a whole number into a smart pump. Okay, so here's the last slide for you. These are things that I believe you need to simply memorize. Memorize, one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So when someone says you've got a patient that is 100 kilograms, you know automatically that your conversion is going to be 100 kilograms times 2.2. <coughs> Memorize your 24-hour clock. Memorize the formulas for Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. And then memorize these simple equivalencies. A teaspoon is 5 mils. Three teaspoons are 15 mils. One tablespoon is 15 mils. Two tablespoons are 30 mils. 30 mil is one fluid ounce. If you can get those down and memorize them, um, then you've got half the battle. Um, these come easy. You can do all kinds of things with that. That's all I have for you. I hope this helps you um, with your upcoming exams. Thank you very much.